Hello, OK Crew, and welcome back to another yoga class. Today is a part two from Tuesday's class where we primarily focus on upper body. In today's class, we will be taking more of a focus on our lower body. You will need one prop for the beginning of class, that being a block. You can also use a pillow or a book or just have a really good imagination and commit to it. So with that being said, let's get started. We're going to begin in a tabletop position. So remember to spread your fingers nice and wide, stack your shoulders over top of your wrists and knees are stacked underneath of your shoulders. And we're going to begin with what's called hip cars. So our hips are synovial joints, meaning that they have synovial fluid that allow them to go through a greater range of motion than say something like your finger, which just flexes and extends. So with that being said, we want to make sure that we're moving them regularly through all of their ranges of motion so that these joints stay limber and mobile and allow us to do movement and do it well. So with that being said, draw your left foot up towards the ceiling, keeping the knee bent. Open up the hip to the side wall, drawing knee up to elbow, down and around back to our starting position with the legs still lifted. Then we're gonna come through that movement in reverse. Drawing knee up towards elbow, coming up to the side wall, and back down and around. So we'll do that two more times, one time being both directions. In these movements, try to make sure that the movement is coming just from your left hip and that you're not swaying your sides or opening up your chest to try to get a deeper movement because we really want these movements to be slow and controlled and coming from the hip itself. One last time. And we'll come back to center and switch sides. So right foot reaches up towards the ceiling, open up towards the side wall, knee comes to elbow, and returns to that starting position, and then come through it reversed. nice slow and controlled here it's so easy to want to rush through these movements but the saying is true slow and steady wins the race one last time going forwards and backwards and noticing any areas that might feel difficult for you, where things just feel stickier or more awkward. And then we'll all meet back in center and lower all the way down to our belly. Arms can come out in front of you. And your feet will come together and knees separated so you're coming into a diamond shape with your legs. You can rest your head on your, uh, on your forearm. And then we're gonna pulse our feet up. So squeezing the glutes, drawing the legs up. And we're gonna do that 10 times. So for a count of one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stay lifted and then pulse for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower it down. Come back up, we'll do another 10, 9, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come all the way down. We'll all meet in a seated position. And this is where you'll want your block, pillow, book, whatever. And if you do have some discomfort in your low back, I would suggest you can either place a pillow underneath your hips to help you lean forward a little bit more so that you don't round through the low back, or you can lean up against the wall. So sitting up high on your sits bones, you'll place the block on whatever height you want. So you can go uh, the lowest level, second lowest or highest, if you're using this with books or pillow, just stack more, depending on what it is that you're looking for. And then your hands can come up behind you to help make sure that you stay up nice and tall. So you're gonna be sitting up nice and tall, no rounding in the low back. And then with your foot, come up over and return back to center. We'll do this 10 times. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and switch sides. Sit nice and tall, go for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, halfway, 4, 3, 2, last one, and 1. Place the block out of your way, and we'll all meet standing at the top of the mat. Toes can be together, heels slightly apart, or standing with hips width apart. Sweep your arms up overhead, sink your hips down and back into chair pose. Make sure that you're able to see your toes past your knees, and that you're able to wiggle your toes here. Sitting down as far as you need to while maintaining a challenging position. Hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, stay in your seated position, hands on hips. Lift your right foot up and away and step it back behind you, coming into crescent lunge. Your right leg, your back leg is extended, really yawning open that back knee. The heel is lifted here. And again, because this is more lower body, you can place your hands on your hips. We really want to make sure that we're maintaining quality movement in the lower body. So it's okay to let your upper body rest. If you would like to challenge yourself though, feel free to put your arms up overhead. Just make sure that it doesn't sacrifice the quality of your lunge. Hold for five, four, three, two, one, and then bend your right knee back down. Holding for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, one, and then pulse for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Step back up into your chair pose. Hands can stay on your hips here. Peel your left foot away from the mat and step back into your high crescent lunge. Holding for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, bend the back knee, low crescent lunge for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and pulse, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, back up into chair, arms come up overhead, come to stand, palms down at heart center. Inhale, sweep your arms up overhead, gaze follows. Exhale, sweep your arms down behind you as you begin to lift your right leg up away from the mat, hinging at the hips into warrior three. Left hand lowers down to the mat. Open up your chest into half moon. Your right arm will come down to the mat. Lower your right leg all the way down. Your left leg step back, but keep lifted into a plank pose. Left knee comes back through your hands. Arms come by your sides, push up into warrior three. Keep your hips nice and level here. Left arm reaches down, open up into half moon. Both hands on the mat, bend into your front knee. Right leg comes down. Left leg reaches back into a high plank pose. Left leg steps through. Arms come back, float up into your warrior three. Open into half moon. Plant both hands. Right foot comes all the way down. Left foot steps back, keep it lifted. Left leg steps through. Arms come back, push up into your warrior three. Open up through side moon. Both arms on the mat, right foot steps all the way back, left foot to meet right, keep it lifted. Step all the way through, this time right leg meets left, arms sweep up overhead into chair. Inhale to come stand, square your hips off to the side room, take a wide stance here, feet are out. At about 10 and 2, coming down into a low squat or goddess pose, arms come up into cactus. Hold here.
I'm gonna squat down a little bit lower. Spine is nice and tall here. It's also known as a sumo squat. And we'll begin to pulse for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands on hips. Inhale to stand. Step to the front of your mat. Inhale, sweep your arms up overhead, palms up to these follows. Exhale, lower your hands down by your sides. Begin to lift your left leg up. Hinge up hips into warrior three on the right side. Your left foot is flexed. Toes point to the ground, hips are level. Right hand lowers down to the ground. Chest opens into half moon. Both hands come down to the mat. Left foot steps all the way back. Right foot meets left, keep it lifted into a high plank position. Right foot steps through your hands. Your arms come back down by your side, float in to your warrior three. Flex that foot, keep your hips level. Open up to half moon. Place both hands down on the mat. Left foot reaches all the way back. Right foot reaches back into your high plank position. Right foot steps through. Hands come down by your sides. Push through into your warrior three. Open up to half moon. Both hands reach for the mat. Left foot steps all the way back. Right foot reaches all the way back to keep it lifted. Do this one more time. Right foot reaches in between your hands. Arms come down by your sides. Float up into your warrior three. Open up into half moon. Both hands come down to the mat. Left foot reaches all the way back. Right foot reaches all the way back. Right foot steps between your hands. Left foot steps between your hands. Hips sink down and back. Arms reach up overhead. Inhale, come to stand. Now you can stay where you are. I'm gonna to turn to face the camera, but we're gonna come into Malasana. So Malasana, your feet are just past hip width. It's a very low squat. So we're coming down, I'm gonna demonstrate first and then we'll all do it together. We're gonna to come down into Malasana. So it's a low squat, try to keep your chest up nice and tall, not leaning forward and having the hips pop up. If this is as far as you can come down without leaning forward, then just come down this far or as however far that is for you. This is what we're aiming for. So all together, we're gonna lower down to a count of 10. So 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and start to rise for 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, 
three, two, and one. Lowering down half the time. For five, four, three, two, and one. Hold for five, four, three, two, one, and rise for five, four, three, two, and one. Again, so turning to face the front of your mat, lower down into a half kneeling pose. Left leg will be behind you. Your front leg, so your right leg is up, hip and knee at 90-90. Tuck your tailbone under. You should begin to feel a stretch in your left hip flexor right away. If this is a good enough stretch for you, stay here. If you'd like to take it further, begin to lean forward. Breathing here as we slowly start to cool the body down, letting the heart rate return to normal. Inhale back to center. And then this time, walk your right foot out to the outside of your mat, leaning forward here. Your hands can come down here. So I'm going to turn to show you this point of view. So your foot is off to the side. You can stay here if this gives you a nice stretch through the hip flexor. Or you can lower down onto your forearms. And you have the option of coming up onto the side of your, your foot. This will give you a nice stretch through the right hip flexor. I'm flipped to you now because of the camera. Um, it gets confusing going sideways to front on. So somewhere if that's confusing. This is called lizard. You're getting a nice stretch through both hips. Plant your foot back on the mat. Come all the way back into your half kneeling pose. And then we're going to switch legs. So right leg is going to come down to the mat. Left leg up at that 90-90. Tuck your tailbone under to begin to feel a nice stretch to the right hip. And begin to lean forward. Noticing how your breath might feel coming in and out now compared to the beginning of our stretching sequence. How much has your body rested already? Inhale to come back to center and then walk your left foot out to outside of your mat. Your hands come down to the mat. You can move your back foot out a little bit if you need to to get into a nicer stretch through the right side. And then you have the option to stay here or come down onto your forearms. Your left foot roll up so that you're on the outside of your foot, opening up the left knee to the side wall. Plant your left foot back down on the floor. Push up back into that half kneeling pose. And then we'll all come into a seated position. We'll come into cobbler's pose. So cobblers, your feet are together. Your hips open up like a book. And then draw your feet in as close as is comfortable for you to begin to feel a nice stretch through the inner thigh. If your knees are really pushed up, you have a few options. Number one, just let your feet come out a little bit further if that helps them to relax. Or if you want a deep stretch, 
just make sure that you place books or a pillow or something underneath your knees so that they can rest. If you don't have anything underneath them and you're up here nice and high, your muscles aren't gonna be able to relax because they're contracting to keep you up into that position. So if you place something underneath them, something tactile, they know they can relax, you are gonna get a better stretch. So just choose whatever option is best for you. Just make sure you're sitting up nice and high on your sits bones. It's not rolling to the lower back, sitting up nice and high. And maybe the hinge from the hips. So not rounding through the back, trying to draw your head towards your feet, but bringing chest towards your feet by hinging at the hips. You can stay still here, or you can rock side to side, noticing how it feels in the opposite hip as you sway to one side or the other. Maybe hanging out in an area that might feel extra sticky or tight. Getting a little bit more attention. Inhale to come back to a seated position. Your left leg extend out long and your right foot draw into your inner thigh. So we're looking for this shape. Again, sit up nice and high on your sits bones and then begin to fold over this leg. You can reach just on the mat, reach for your shin, your ankle, maybe your toes. But again, we're trying to draw your chest down to your knees, not your forehead. So finding length through the spine and no rounding. Your left foot, keep it flexed. This will give you a greater stretch and involves the calves a lot more. And just keep breathing here, returning to our belly breathing. Letting the air fill up the lower belly into the ribs, separating the intercostal muscles between our rib cage, and then lastly up into the chest, and then as you exhale, feeling everything drawing back to the midline. Inhale to come back to a seated position. Switch your feet so your right leg will come out long, left foot to inner thigh, Sitting up nice and tall on your sits bones. Take a nice deep inhale, and then exhale to forward fold. Again, keep this foot flexed. Maybe notice how one side might feel different than the other. Or maybe you even feel a tightness in a different spot. Inhale to come back up to a tall seated position. Bend both knees so that your feet are flat on the mat and slowly lower all your way down. Draw your knees in towards your chest. Give a nice little rock here. And then lower your left foot down to the mat and your right ankle will cross over your left knee, making a figure four position with your legs. Keep your right foot flexed and then Wrap your hands around the back of your left thigh or the front of your left shin. With every breath, trying to draw your knee closer into your chest. This is a nice piriformis stretch. The piriformis is a muscle in your buttocks. And this stretch does a really good job of targeting it. 
Make sure that your weight is evenly distributed on your hip bones here. It's easy to want to walk to one side or the other to reduce the stretch. So just being aware of that. So keep your legs where they are, but lower your arms down to the mat. They can come out in a T position or bending at the elbows into a cactus position. And then drop your right foot to the left side as we come into a twist. Your gaze can be up overhead, or if you would like to deepen the stretch, you can rock your head to the right. Make sure that both shoulders are resting on the ground. If your right shoulder is popping up, you can place a pillow or a blanket underneath your shoulder, or you can place your right hand on your right hip, just so that you're not putting any unnecessary stress on the right, um, on your chest on the right side. On an inhale, draw your gaze back to center and your knees back to center. Switch feet here so your right foot will plant on the ground, left foot will cross over right knee, left foot is flexed, and then your hands will either wrap around the back of your right thigh or the front of your right shin. where they are but your arms can come down into T or cactus and then slowly lower your left foot to the right side coming back into a twist. Your gaze can be straight up or you can roll your head to the left side. Again check in with your shoulders make sure they're both resting on the mat. On an inhale, draw your knees back to center, your knees back to center, and hug both knees into your chest, giving a nice little rock here. Take any last seated movements before you extend your legs out long. Your arms can come down by your sides, palms facing open, as we come into Shavasana or Horse Pose, to their final resting pose of today's class. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day.